Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing the Paul Morphy saga and we are continuing the 1858 uh, London match between Paul Charles Morphy and Johann Jakob Leventhal. Like we've said uh, in the couple of previous videos so far, uh, Leventhal lost a match to the 12 year old Morphy back in 1850 and now he wants to settle the score and prove to everyone that he is the stronger player. Uh, but uh, so far not doing all that great. In the first four games, one game was drawn and the other three were won by Morphy. So Lowenthal still uh, needs to win a single game in this match to, uh, well, to, to, to even hope, uh, have some hopes of winning the match. And we're going to show the game now, a uh, very, very exciting game. Uh, but uh, I would just like to mention that uh, the FIDE made it official. The Candidates Tournament 2020 resumes on 1st of November. Uh, and if you want to learn more about this, there will be a, a, the, a link in the description below. First thing you see uh, if you want to uh, check out a, a bit more info on that. So let's uh, continue. Uh, Leventhal with the white pieces opens with e4. As he usually does, Morphy replies with e5. We have knight f3. And Morphy goes for the Petro of Defense with knight to f6. We have knight captures on e5, going for the main line, classical variation, d6, knight f3, and now knight captures on e4. So basically, uh, the same as if it was played in 2020. Uh, we have d4, d5, and bishop to d3. So this is, uh, t t to date, considered still the main theory. Bishop to e7, and uh, here Lowenthal castles uh, t to safety, preparing to bring the rook into the game. Knight c6, uh, and here c4. And now, uh, nowadays, uh, you want to uh, react to the c4 uh, move by either going knight to f6 or knight to b4, both... Uh, uh, well, both uh, uh, add additional protection to the d5 pawn, while this move also uh, goes for the light square bishop here. But Morphy goes for bishop to e6, and this is a very old move and uh, no longer played today. So uh, here is where uh, modern engines and the development of modern theory uh, made, uh, made, made some difference. Uh, we have c captures on d5, bishop captures, and bishop to e3. And it is as of move 10 that this position has never been reached again. Uh, we have castles by Morphy and now knight to c3. Continuing development, threatening to pick up the knight here as it's attacked twice. And now a f5, Morphy uh, strengthens the knight in the center of the board. We have knight captures on d5, uh, grabbing that light square bishop. So Morphy loses the bishop pair and the queen captures on d5. And now Lomital goes for bishop to c2 uh, with the deadly threat of going bishop to b3, which will win Morphy's queen. So Morphy, of course, reacts with king to h8, not allowing the capture. Bishop to b3, uh, remaneuvering the bishop, and the queen to d6 now. And now, uh, Lowenthal grabs more space with d5. And now, you could go to e5, for example, knight e5, captures, captures, and then uh, something like bishop to d4, uh, which is which is very much playable. Uh, however, uh, sorry about that. Uh, however, uh, Morphy uh, decides to go for knight to a5 instead. Uh, we have bishop to d4, just the same, and now Morphy counters the bishop right away with bishop to f6. So even though Morphy lost the bishop pair, he counters the dark square bishop with his dark square bishop, and he always has the, ob um, uh, uh, well, the, the opportunity to capture uh, the light square bishop on b3. So rook to e1, Lowenthal just continues uh, developing pieces, and rook a to d8. Morphy does the same. And here we have a trade. We have captures on f6, captures on f6, and now knight to g5. Again, Lowenthal with the threats, knight to e6 is the threat uh, that will uh, win one of the rooks, but Morphy counters with the threat of uh, queen captures on h2. And now it is interesting if you go knight to e6, if you allow this, then just uh, rook to e8 and you don't win any material. Since if the knight moves, if you capture the rook, then the rook also controls the, the escape square and the queen to h1 will just be checkmate. So after this knight to g4 move, we have g3 prevents uh, queen captures on h2. And now uh, we have uh, just not, uh, queen back to c5. Uh, you could also just play knight captures uh, here uh, on b3, uh, queen captures, and then go for the... For the d5 uh, pawn but morphy uh, not interested in this for the moment so here uh, even though if you go for this it's basically a draw for example you could just trade everything off captures so you could even capture with the queen uh for example uh let's say even with or with the pawn if you want to open up uh, the the file for your rook to to have an attack uh, uh, on the pawn here for example, now you go uh, queen captures on d5, knight to e6, and now captures, captures, and here uh, rook captures, captures, and now this rook will finally move, for example, uh, to c8. 
uh, as uh, well the, the c pawn is under attack but even if you do this rook to c8 uh, you're gonna allow this rook to come all the way to d7 and now it's gonna be well it's uh, Morphe is up a pawn for the moment but you're gonna win one of them so not nothing uh, nothing special here really happens so instead after this um, uh, after this uh, queen to c5 move uh, we have a different idea uh, we have queen to e2 just defending this uh, f2 pawn uh, so here we have queen to e2 and only now Morphe goes for knight captures on b3 a captures and now again not going for the d5 pawn but rather rook d to e8 and this is uh, well, here it becomes uh, really tricky uh, because while you you could go for this, it it's uh, it's very dangerous to uh, to try uh, to uh, try and get too much as you see. Morphe goes rook d to e8, queen to f3, and now again not going for the trade. Uh, probably going for the trade captures captures and queen c2 is best because you keep the pressure on the f2 pawn and you also threaten these two pawns. You've eliminated one of the rooks and you are uh, well you are uh, very happy for the moment. However. Uh, instead of all of this, uh, after this uh, queen to f3 move, uh, Morphe goes knight to e5. And now, okay, you're pressuring the queen. If the queen ever loses control of the f3 square, you might have some very uh, nasty checks happening. But on the other hand, you allow queen to h5. And now, uh, Leventhal is already threatening checkmate. So Morphe needs to defend against this. h6, and now rook a to d1. You could go for captures, captures, and the knight to f7 check, but that's uh, just trading you don't really gain anything so first rook a to d1 add additional support to the d5 pawn and keep all the pressure the knight doesn't really need to move the pawn is pinned so it's not a problem here morphe goes uh, queen to c2 queen to b6 uh, is a bit more resilient as it uh, keeps uh, keeps an eye on the entire sixth rank but after queen to c2 uh, he allows a very very nice move by Lemental. Uh, so even if you uh, don't see it right away, pause the video and find this move uh, for white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the, well, the, the, the knight jump to e6. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight to e6. And now everything is hanging. Uh, the rook is under attack if the rook moves away from the from the back rank then this rook is under attack if you don't do anything about this then this knight is under attack uh, also uh, you can move the rook because the queen guards this rook so the black queen will not be able to capture it so everything is nicely connected however Morphe finds counterplay he goes knight to g4 again there's the problem of this f2 pawn so first Lovental needs the ways to move to defend it rook to f1 and now Morphe goes for queen captures on b2. He sacrifices the exchange because if you uh, if you go for something like rook to g8 because you cannot move away from the defense of this rook, then rook c1, then the rook can come over here, the knight can come to f4 to g6. It's just going to be uh, it's just going to be incredibly difficult to defend this. So Morphe instead uh, decides to uh, capture the pawn instead uh, and uh, allow uh, Leventhal to capture the exchange. So queen captures on b2. Knight captures, rook captures, and now h3. Lomental doesn't want this knight uh, constantly being here on g4. Uh, as, as long as the knight is here, you will not be able to activate this rook. So knight back to f6, attacking the queen, and now queen captures on f5, finally. And uh, Morphe, of course, grabs the b3 pawn. So now the end result of uh, all that has happened uh, is that Morphe is up a pawn, he's down the exchange, but he does have the two connected pass pawns uh, on, the, on the queen's side. So d6, uh, it's a very bold move, allowing Morphe to create three connected pass pawns. On the other hand, if Morphe uh, ignores the pawn, uh, then Lovental also gets a beautiful pass pawn here. So Morphe uh, captures this, we have rook captures on d6, and now comes queen to f7. Uh, helping out with the defense and also keeping an eye on the pawns here. Rook back to d2 uh, and now a6. Morphe now needs to find a way how to start pushing his pass pawns. We have rook to e1 uh, and b5 now. And here queen to c5, not allowing any pawn pushes as the queen covers this. Also, if you push, you just lose this pawn. So rook to e8. Morphe wants to get rid of uh, a pair of rooks and then he will try and support the pushing of the pawns with his knight and queen. We have rook d to e2, forcing a trade, but on e2, as you don't want to allow any ideas, like if the rooks move, you might have some, let's say, queen captures or, or, or something like that, king captures, knight e4, check, picking up the queen. Not while the queen is defending the f2 pawn, but uh, could be 
uh, could be uh, you know tricky. So uh, Leventhal wants to keep the rook uh, 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 as an additional defender on the second rank. So rook captures on e2, rook captures, and now queen to b3. Uh, the queen now defends the pawn, and you can start pushing your a pawn. However, uh, Leventhal also has a move. Uh, so he goes rook, uh, not rook to e8, queen to f8 with check. Uh, and Morphy now needs to decide, does he move, does he block? Uh, if you go king to, h, uh, king to h7, then it's uh, very hard to uh, decide what to do here. Rook is coming to e7, and then you have a lot of problems here. It will be very, very hard to defend. You could go queen b1 check, let's say king g2, and then bring the queen back. Uh, but then you will shift the, the, the queen away and go after the pawns this way. Well, it is possible Morphy doesn't uh, like this idea uh, of moving the king. So instead, he blocks check with the knight. Uh, and now we have uh, rook to e7. Now threatening the uh, g7 pawn. And this will, of course, be checkmate. So Morphy will now be forced to constantly keep an eye on the g7 pawn and on the g8 knight. So first, queen d1 check, king to h2. And now queen to d4, guarding the g7 pawn. Uh, and now comes rook to e8. Now uh, Leventhal threatens to capture the knight here. We have queen to c4 defending. And now rook to a8. Not uh, giving uh, Morphy a, a moment to catch his breath. Now the a pawn is being threatened. But now b4, defending the pawn this way. So Elemental uh, remaneuvers once again. Rook to a7, again threatening checkmate. And Morphy again needs to defend. Queen d4 with defending uh, and attacking of the rook. Uh, but on the other hand, you have to give up one of the pawns. So rook captures and now b3. Uh, if the pawn reaches b2, then it could already get uh, very dangerous. So of course, uh, uh, white will not allow that. Rook to a8, again threatening the knight here and the queen to d5. We have rook to a7, again threatening checkmate and now queen to d4. But now rook to b7, putting the rook behind the pass pawn and really... Uh, if you go for b2 here, which seems like a reasonable thing to do after rook to b8, uh, you, you're going to lose the pawn either way because the queen needs to defend uh, against checkmate and then you're just going to pick up the pawn. So after this rook to b7 move, we have queen to c3, a waiting move by Morphy, uh, but now comes a, a very strong move, queen to f7, not allowing any future uh, remaneuvering of the queen along this diagonal. And now rook to b8, you will not be able to do anything about this. So Morphy needs to unpin here. If rook b8 comes, it's game over. So now he plays king to h7. So if rook b8 comes, knight f6 can be played. Uh, but uh, after this uh, king to h7, uh, Lovental plays just uh, rook captures on b3 because now the queen also guards that. You cannot defend against everything. So rook captures and now queen to e5 by Morphy. So now it's actually Lovental who's up a pawn and also up the exchange. And it's going to be incredibly difficult for Morphy to, to, to save this game. So rook to b7. Again, uh, constant pressure here on the, on the g7 pawn. And now h5. Morphy needs to start pushing some pawns to create some openings. Rook d7. Uh, and now knight to h6. Uh, we have queen to d5 now offering a queen trade and queen f6. Morphy declines. Queen to d3 check. King to h8 and now rook to d8 with check. Again the knight blocks and now queen to d4. Now offering a queen trade. Uh, Morphy again declines and uh, while uh, offering a queen trade uh, he also guards the f2 pawn. So Morphy goes queen f3 and now king to g1. Now the king also uh, defends this. Uh, we have king to h7 and now queen to d5 with an attack on the queen, an attack on the pawn, and a double attack on the knight here. And here Morphy really doesn't have any choice. He needs to trade. So captures, captures, and now knight to f6. Morphy is now uh, down a pawn and down the exchange in a rook against knight endgame. Uh, so uh, if a miracle doesn't happen here, uh, Leventhal should win this game. So will this be... Uh, Lomental's first victory in the match. Uh, well, let's see what happened here. Rook to e5 and king g6. Morphy starts bringing the king into the game. f4 uh, and now king to f7. We have king g2. Uh, Lomental also knows that uh, the king is very important uh, in the endgame. So uh, we have king back to g6 by Morphy. Uh, forced to wait and see what uh, Lomental does. We have king f3, king f7 and now rook to a5. Uh, the knight is still on the board so you don't want your rook close to your king could be you know could be very dangerous king to g6 morphy again forced uh, to play waiting moves and now rook a6 pinning the knight so king f7 and now of course f5 taking away these squares from the king uh, we have knight to d5 and now g4 
uh, we have captures, captures, and now knight back to e7. We have king f4, improving the position of the king. Knight d5 check, we have uh, king to e5, and now knight back to f6. Uh, and here, uh, Loventhal just played rook to a7 check, and it was in this position, on move 70, that Paul Charles Morphy resigned the game, and uh, Johan Jakob Loventhal got his first victory in the match. So is this the turning point of the match or is this just an anomaly? Uh, well, we'll continue the match and see what happens. But here, of course, you resign because there's not much you can do. Uh, once the king moves, uh, for example, you're going to move the king. King to e6 is coming with some very nasty threats. The, the pawn is coming. Uh, of course, you cannot capture because the threat of checkmate. So you don't really care. You're just going to keep pushing. And it's a very quick uh, victory. There's even... Uh, like, uh, if you try something like knight to d8, you're going to go rook a8. King to g8, uh, you don't have any moves here. Like, if you do this, then you just get f6. And, uh, well, you're, you're running out of moves. g5, f7, and that's just it. So, yeah, after rook to a7, Morphy resigned. And uh, first victory for Johan Jakob Leventhal in the match. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you're enjoying the match between the two of them and the saga so far. Uh, there's always a link in the description below. If you're just joining the saga, do, do start it from the beginning as you really want to know more about the, the genius that is Paul Charles Morphy. If this is the only game you've ever seen by Paul Morphy, you don't think this is like who he is, you know, do, do check out the entire saga. So, yeah, uh, I would like to thank Jeffrey Johnson, uh, Hanna Tomaske, Ria Singh, uh, Srinivas Batula and Sid, uh, and Ulrich Dama for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the good stuff, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And do check out the link in the description below if you want to learn more about the FIDE Candidates 2020 tournament. Uh, see you soon.